Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution, the place where the Communist Party leaders come together to debate the main issues of the uh, day and week. Rosanna and Michael, Anita and Scott, hello, and I uh, hope you all had a good week. Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, good morning. Good morning Revolution. Revolution. I'm glad. I like hearing y'all say that. You need to like, <laughs> you need to make it like a little cheer. And people, would, people might think we're a little weird if we did that. That was a bad <laughs> idea anyway. I'm, I'm, need I'm a choreography, to... Joe. Yes, yeah. Yes. Maybe do a little dance number too. <laughs> you know, but, well, what's her name said? If I can't dance, I don't want to join your revolution, you know? <laughs> and um, I heard that. Well, it's been a uh, interesting week, um, but we wanted to talk a little bit uh, this morning about something that happened uh, on Wednesday night. The Communist Party's uh, national board got together and had a uh, one of its regular uh, uh, meetings. Mm -hmm. And at that meeting, it adopted a, uh, a document and forwarded it to the party's national committee about running for office candidates standing for power uh, and and the communist party hasn't hasn't had a long uh, recent history in fact not too much of a recent history at all with respect to running for office rosanna are you ready to run you know rosanna for president <laughs> in 2024 20, uh, I don't know if I would have the energy, but uh, you know, if my party decided that that's the best uh, course of action, of course I will. You're a great democratic centralist. Me, I, <laughs> if, if nominated, I will not run. If elected, <laughs> I will not serve. I not <laughs> well, anybody, don't ask me because my, wifey, my wife forbids it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Corey said no, huh? Yeah, Corey, Corey says she will not be the husband of a, of a presidential candidate. Ah, <laughs> or the okay. wife of a presidential candidate. That leaves Michael and Anita. Michael, you ready to run? Oh, I have the same answer as Rosanna. I'd feel flattered and, you know, nervous, obviously. You wonder if you're ever up to the job, but I'll do whatever the party calls on me to do. Ah, we have somebody who's really interested, Anita. Michael's ready to, <laughs> ready to roll, him, him and Rosanna. Uh, no, nope. you? you never know. I'm I'm moving. I'm moving next month to a small, uh, another small district, a different district. So there might be opportunities. I thought about running for, um, you know, to represent my ward in the uh, Democratic uh, Party um, Central Committee, but um, mm -hmm. ended up, you know, supporting my my neighbor instead, and she won, which was great. Oh, cool. My mother ran for office twice back in Youngstown, Ohio, when it was tough to do. She ran for city council and she ran for county commissioner. And her best effort, she, she ran as an independent, she got 24% of the vote. And That's so we were really happy about that, you know. Mm -hmm. If we were living in France or Italy, we, we would have got elected, you know. <laughs> they have, no, it's true. Yeah. We, we, they have <clears throat> proportional representation yep. there. And if you were in Israel, you would be prime minister. <laughs> prime minister. Hey, For 24%. For 24%. That's all I need, well, you know. If, if Washington North. agreed. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but um, why now, Scott? Do you think the Communist Party is uh getting ready to flex is our electoral muscle is not the right time yeah I mean, there, there are a couple of things you know one the 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 party is growing um the need for the party the the role of the party is is more and more important as the the crises of of capitalism uh intensify the the fascist threat you know is still there more and more people are seeing that you know, to address, to preserve democracy, you have to be willing to go beyond capitalism. That's part of it. Um, another part is there, there's a, a real upsurge of electoral, like grassroots electoral activity across the left um, from, you know, candidates coming out of organized labor, um, out, of, out of left movements, young candidates, uh, people of color, women, come, again, coming out of these movements and building this infrastructure for, uh, a new kind of 
set of, of, of left and progressive institutions. And, and we definitely have a role to play in that. And, you know, we have good people. We have great thinkers, activists, you know, working class uh, intellectuals who, who could do uh, wonderful things. So I think this is, I think it's great um, and absolutely timely. Well, Rosanna, can we get elected? I mean, you know, there is that element of anti, anti-communism that's still out there. Do you think that the American public is ready for communist candidates? Um, actually, I do think they, the, that we're ready, but not for president, obviously, I, I don't think. But I think for the lo more local areas, I think there, there are very good chances because people are looking for alternatives. They're looking for you know, hope and the, the Communist Party, we offer that hope, we offer that. And it's not just false hope, it's real hope. So I think that definitely uh, the people, you know, we can win in, in certain areas. And uh, I think it's, it's timely. Nobody thought a black man would get elected president right? when he ran for office. Everybody, including me, was like, "Who do you think?" But on the mm -hmm. on the oh, question right. of, of communist candidates and are we are, is America ready for them? You know, we should point out that running, you know, running communist candidates doesn't always mean running people on a communist party ballot line. Um, right. It could be running as independents. It could be running, you know, uh, within the framework of uh, the Democratic Party. It depends on where, what struggles were involved in, what coalitions were involved in. Um, somebody in this meeting had a really great formulation that I, I think there's repeating. Um, the, the, what ballot line we run on is a question of tactics. The principled question is the question of issues. Um, and, and that's really, uh, I think, what our approach has to be. Now, but Michael, for years, the party didn't run, starting during the Reagan period. Uh, was it Reagan and then Reagan? And, and the reason we didn't run for office uh, nationally was because, you know, we wanted to focus on defeating the Republican right and we didn't want to make any contribution, no matter how small, to electing Republicans. Isn't that still an issue? I mean, the Congress has split 50-50 with, with Kamala Harris breaking the vote. I mean, do you really want to get Republicans elected, Michael? Well, it's interesting because I have right here in front of me a list of... Um comrades who historically were elected and are currently elected. And um, I'm thinking of Benjamin Davis, uh, first black communist councilman here in New York. And he was elected during the popular front period. He was elected in 1943. And that's at a time that we were, you know, pretty much endorsing the, the uh, New Deal. You know, we were on board with, uh, you know, some of a lot of FDR's programs. We pushed them on the Wagner Act and uh, we pushed them on the Social Security Act. And so it's not that we go and do our own thing isolated from the wider you know people's movement but we uh win where we can like rosanna was saying maybe not uh the presidency but even now we have two you know we have a, a council person you know a known council person out there in pennsylvania and wisconsin and so i think we can continue to play a role in the wider fight against fascism while also taking initiative you know political parties run candidates and uh, we have to do that at every level. And so we can, uh, you know, kind of balance it out like uh, 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 Scott was saying, it's a question of tactics. And uh, in regards to your question about why for so long we didn't do it, I also think that things are changing because our party has grown so much, uh, you know, in this recent period. We have the cadre, unlike in the 90s, I would say, uh, due to questions of the international movement and so forth. Uh, we have the cadre to go out there and, and get people on the ballot and really, you know, put the time and effort into these campaigns. So maybe that may have, a, you know, a difference, a positive impact. But Anita, don't you, aren't you afraid that you're going to end up re electing Republicans? I mean, you're going to split the Democratic vote. I mean, you know, you got all these good candidates out there r running. I mean, you know, come well, on. Show that to support the progressives. That's why we need to really be strategic about this. And I think there is that danger sometimes. We had a, a, a race here in uh, Columbus for the Franklin County prosecutor and a kind of um, ultra left uh, candidate came in and, and basically spoiled it. So the, the Republican won again. So I think we have to be very careful, but there are a lot of races that are not even challenged by the Democratic Party. 
But I think uh, one thing that's different about this document is that we're really running candidates to win elections and not just as an educational um, program, because I mean, I remember the, the Hall uh, Davis campaigns and, uh, the, and Jarvis Tyner's campaign for mayor. And we were, we were running with the expectation that we were educating people about socialism. And that is a worthy cause, but not what this document is really calling for. But isn't Rosanna uh, running? I mean, she he just ran anyway. I mean, I mean, it, it, doesn't agitation and education by itself have value? I don't think at this day and age, no. I mean, I think you know where there are possibilities of us winning some some local elections, especially. But I think it really, I'd like to really emphasize that it has to be strategic. It's not, it cannot be willy nilly because there are those factors that you're pointing out to about, you know, splitting the, the vote and that we have to be very, very mindful of. So I think, you know, strategic and on the issues is our starting point, not just because I'm a communist and I want to run, but it has to be very strategic. And that's, you know, that's always been the party's. Um, point of reference is, you know, looking at things strategically and what's good, what's going to move the whole, not just the party itself or the individual. And but isn't raising the issues, uh, uh, like, for example, if you had a campaign for Senate, it would give you an opportunity to talk about not only national issues, but international issues. Scott, and, and, and doesn't that the Communist Party have a Right to so there, a responsibility to, to 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 say and to speak and to try to shift the debate. So yes, I, I mean the the balance between um, sort of agitation, education on the one hand, and uh, struggling for uh, power on the other hand, um, it you know it varies, you know, in relation to the the objective conditions. Um, we're in a period now where uh, left forces, progressive forces are much more moving toward, um, you know, trying to, to attain power through elections and we should be part of that. Um, in, in other periods, you know, it may make more sense to, to focus more on uh, agitation, educating people about socialism. But right now, I agree with, you know, the way it's put in the document, we should, we should be running people uh, to win. Lenin addresses this, in fact, in, in two tactics, which is my favorite. I, I talk about it all the time. Um, but he, he dismisses the, the kind of Menshevik uh, approach, saying that you know, when you're in a, a moment that's moving toward revolution, you don't just stand back and agitate and educate. You, you struggle for power. I'm not saying we're you know, on the cusp of revolution or anything, but we are things that I was about to say, yeah, I was about to jump on you on that one. <laughs> Joe, but isn't it also important, like on that note, to emphasize that our party as materialists and not idealists, that we understand that we do live in a two party system. And that's why we have that kind of like inside outside approach. We know how to work within the two party system, but also to struggle outside of it. And, you know, not only in terms of the trade union movement and the fight against imperialism and the fight against fascism, but also when it comes to elections, um, like I'm thinking of a. Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, you, you brought up two tactics, Scott, but I'm thinking of um, left-wing communism, you know, and, and uh, the point on bourgeois elections. And I'm thinking of how, you know, there are um, comrades in South Africa who are elected to the ANC. And there's, you know, in Spain right now, there's a third vice president. They have different vice presidential roles and she's a communist woman, you know, and that gives her and her party a platform at the, at the international, the national, both the international level, uh, like uh, what Joe's saying. And so I think, that you, you can't uh, disregard anything. You can't write anything off because we have to not only educate people, but we, we are in it to win it, which I think is something Rosanna often writes about. We're in it to win it. We're in it for the long haul. So that's So true. Anita, you're gonna run against progressive Democrats and uh, <laughs> like no. you know, AOC, <laughs> the guy she beat, Anita, was a progressive Democrat. He had a hundred percent voting record, civil rights, labor, and they were like, why are you running against us? Why, why right. don't you pick some? Well, run again. 
Corey Bush in St. Louis also ran against uh, a, a longtime Democrat. And we, we um, my club here in, in Columbus worked with uh, Morgan Harper in the last election. She was going to go try to get the Democratic nomination for Joyce Beatty's seat. Whereas Joyce Beatty is a, a, a reasonable, you know, Democrat, main, mainstream Democrat. Um, I think, I think the, the primary was the appropriate place to, to hash that out. Um, so we'll see. I don't think, I mean, I, yeah, that's why each, each decision has to be really strategically evaluated. And the, the well, bigger I question, mean, you, go on. I say the bigger question for me is um, how, you know, how uh, the decision is made of where, uh, where we should run, uh, who should run, because, you know, we see sometimes, uh, I know looking at the last, uh, presidential elections in France, there were there was a problem on the left of, of not being able to, you know, unite around a presidential candidate. There were a, a few different possibilities, um, uh, none of whom wanted to, uh, a couple possibilities, neither of whom wanted to, you know, pull out and endorse the other. So how do we make that, how do we decide, how do we make the strategic and tactical decision of, of where people can run, who to run? You know, uh, those are all important questions, but I think it's really important politically that the uh, Communist Party uh, and its leadership and, and membership are thinking and taking action now to begin reversing this long steady decline with respect to our approach to electoral work as a form of political struggle. You know, it's really, it's really, you really can't be a political party in the United States unless you run candidates. And in my opinion, you should just run, run, Rosanna, run, run, Michael, run, <laughs> run, Anita, even if you can't win. Even if, because the act of running, of uh, putting forward, it's in and of itself has tremendous power uh, because it, 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 it suggests that you uh, have an objective a goal of ruling with working people for the betterment of working class lives. And that in, in and of itself is very important. But there's another problem, Anita, and that is that if you don't run for office, um, so, somehow the very concept of the party gets diluted. And people begin thinking that, well, if we're not running for office, then are we really a political party? Maybe we're a movement. Maybe we're a movement, you know? We're just mm. maybe we're like DSA, even though they run for office. We're like a lobby inside of the Democratic and outside of the Democratic Party. Our goal is just to educate people, no? I don't know what the, I mean, uh, you, uh, the, the document we are talking about today really makes clear that, um, or asserts that the definition of political party includes running candidates. And I'm, I'm, I'm not totally convinced of that. I think um, I, I, we haven't been running candidates and we've been a political party. Uh, we, we join in coalition with other um, parts of the working class movement and uh, in coalitions, we support candidates sometimes. Um, I don't think that was, I don't think we've not been acting like a political party for the last 20 years. I think, um, so uh, I mean, I'm, I'm all for running candidates where appropriate, but I don't think it's, I don't see it as part of the definition of political party. Okay, yeah. fair enough, fair enough, Michael. I was going to say, I, I, from my understanding of our party's history in the late 40s, when there was the effort to uh, kind of essentially dissolve the party under Browder to make it a communist association, you know, um, and just be kind of an educational society, that was kind of the reactions, you know, how are you not going to run candidates? How are you not going to be out there involved in the electoral struggle, you know? And so I think going back to keeping it about issues, when you're in it to win it and not just to, because I do agree we do have to run even if we don't think we can win. We have to be out there just to you know, be a political party. But part of our party program is to change the electoral system as it exists right now. You know, We're against the electoral college. We're for ranked choice voting, like you mentioned in the cases of France and Italy. And so I think those are important is issues to emphasize too. It's not just that we're you know, running because we 
want to be a political party. I'd say that we are one, but and there, but there's many um, aspects that go into being a political party, and elections is a big part of it. So I do agree with that part of the document. And and the, the okay. fundamental question okay. is is can uh, running our candidates uh, advance the you know the interests of the working class and and the broad people's movement and and you know th that's the the basic question. I think the answer to that is yes. Well, Senator, nobody thought that uh, uh, Barack was going to win, and nobody thought that uh, Bernie was going to have a chance. Oh, it, it'll never happen. He'll never win the primary. He'll, you know, they're going to just red bait him. But there's been a change in the uh, mass thought patterns of the American people, and what we on race, on gender and on the left and politics and attitude towards their socialism. And I suspect the Communist Party. So, Rosanna, I think that uh, we won't know until we put our foot in the water. Am I right or wrong? I, I mean, I agree with you. I think, you know, the election of Barack Obama, I think it, it, it began to show that there is a change, you know, and then the, the overall movement around uh, Bernie Sanders also is another indicator. This is why you know we 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 look at things strategically and what's what's happening in the world. What's happening? What does this mean? What does that mean? So that we can then then put our resources and our and our capacity to what's going to move the what, what's going to move everything forward. So I think uh, the discussion about candidates is right. Uh, I think it's timely. So uh, definitely, I think, you know, uh, once again, it's strategic. All right, well, uh, I know, I, you know, Scott and Anita and Rosanna and Michael, you're gonna have to form a PAC, a political <laughs> action committee, red PAC. Red PAC. Get that dark uh, money. You know, get some red dark money. money. You know, as long as it's from US sources. But no money from China, no money from, Russia, Russia ain't giving us no money anyway. They're gonna give us some money to the National Front and, <laughs> and uh, Putin and them. Well, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, that's kind of what they're doing. And But we're going to do it on the basis of working class money, working class power, working class and people's interests. And I think that has to be it. I want everybody to stay healthy and stay safe and stay in the fight and you can contribute to the Communist Party, new political action, uh, com a committee, Red Pack at cpusa.org. Actually, we don't have one, but if you give us $10,000, we will create one. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 100,000 will create Oh, two. Joe, uh, one last thing. Um, uh, just thanks to everyone who has contributed to the People's World, uh, the, the fundraising drive to save the people's world from the effects of the pandemic, because the result was incredible. We set the original goal of $50,000, passed that, set another of 75 and, and passed that. Uh, and um, it has been just an incredible uh, show of, of solidarity and, and commitment to, to this struggle. So thanks everybody. Good point. And we gotta say one more thing, Sunday night, seven o'clock. Rosanna and uh, Frank Chapman and uh, uh, Jafari and uh, who else? On the Black Panther movie, we're gonna be talking about it. Uh, Judas and the Black Messiah and the Panthers and their history and their legacy. Did you like the movie? Did you hate it? We got one hater up here, I know. Uh, and but we, got, we also got some lovers. We got some lovers, I'm a, I'm a lover. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Michael Jackson said, I'm a lover, it. not a fighter. <laughs> you got to be both in today's world. You got to love the people and fight for their interests. Take care, everybody. Stay strong, stay, stay in the fight. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye,